Hello, welcome to my art and self-improvement podcast. I'm Katie and I'm an artist and a life coach. I help artists get out of procrastination and become obsessed with creating the art that they've been dying to make but just can't seem to do it. I myself struggled with self-loathing, anxiety, depression, and the works. So every week I update you on my learnings from the week before and what I'm doing to create a better life for myself. Let me ask you a question. Do you struggle with perfectionism around your art, around posting, around consistency? Do you make goals to post every week or to post every day and after a few days or weeks of perfect attendance, you'll miss a few days and then you beat yourself up and it all goes down the drain? I think most people do. All the advice everywhere online um, about posting, about gaining attention and followers and an audience, a lot of it has to do about being consistent. But Here's what I really learned last week or the last two weeks. The biggest killer to consistency is perfectionism. If you've been following me for a while, you might know that I struggled so much with this. I would join in on those month-long challenges on Instagram and would fall off pretty quickly, usually after the third day. I was also very critical of my work and I had to make the perfect thing every time. It had to be Instagram worthy. I was also really harsh on myself about drawing certain subjects. Like it had to be something that will impress people. So no indulgent drawings, no female faces. I would like to share one of my client wins because it relates to this a lot. She came to me with a very similar problem where there was just a ton of judgment on the stuff that she was making. It's the same thing over and over again. It's not real art, it's boring, and so on. And I asked her, like, so what? So what if it's all of those things? And we did a lot of work on allowing her to create the work she wanted to create in that moment. Because ultimately, art is for her. I got emails from her every week where she was astounded that she wanted to draw. So so happy for her and for me i'm now to the point where i want to challenge myself to do more than what i find is just easy and enjoyable but not because of perfectionism but because i want a challenge and challenges can be very fun but i had to allow myself where i was at first i had to allow myself to not be perfect And this process of loving ourselves where we are first, letting go of that perfectionism, is also how I cured my social anxiety, which I will go into further detail later in the episode. And it's this process that I've noticed about loving myself where I am, letting go of the perfectionism, is how I've gotten to where anything anything that I want, anything that I wanted to work on in my life, It always starts here. It's doing this process. If you procrastinate, you're probably a perfectionist. I've done a lot of work around this, around my art. I've really, like I said, let go of a lot of that perfectionism around my art. But I realized last week I needed to work on this when it comes to my schedule and when it comes to consistency. They say how you think about one thing is how you do everything. So one of the amazing benefits to doing mind work on one area of your life, you can then apply that meta skill to other areas. And I think that's really what what I did last week. Okay, so last week you may have or not noticed that I didn't post something. I didn't post a podcast last week. I messed up my planning uh, last week where I didn't properly, properly plan in time where I had to travel to Singapore for a few days to handle my visa. If you don't know, I live in Bali in Indonesia, and it's about a two-hour flight, and I have to go there every six months in order to like just get my visa sorted. And I also had a friend visiting that weekend too. And I just did not plan for these things properly. I was really down on myself about it. 
that I, I was thinking like that I really suck at this. Like, you know, I'm going to have to make up a bunch of work that successful people don't do this. Like, you know, uh, other people just have this down, essentially. Lots of stress and anxiety about getting enough work done with all my crazy schedule. And with the help of my coach, I decided to take a week off, which I hadn't done in about a year. And oh my God, I learned I had no idea how to relax, <laughs> like no freaking clue. There was tons of fear and worry that I wasn't going to get all my work done, that I wasn't going to, and that means I won't be successful because that's what everyone says, right? Like, like you, you got to get it done. You got to, you know, you got to be consistent to be successful. I still had my coaching clients. I was still doing coaching, but I decided not to do the podcast and some other work. And so I had to really face my perfectionism and the shame that I was carrying about inconsistency, about being an inconsistent person. I've carried that for so long. If you listen to the last episode, I talked about how I really perceived all the times that I stopped posting on YouTube and Instagram as these public failures. That's how bad I was seeing it. Whereas probably for other people who are following me, they were just like, oh, huh, she hasn't posted in a while. And then like didn't think about it anymore, right? Like, but to me, it was like failure with a capital F written on my forehead. I was also really critical about the content I, I was putting out, like these podcasts. I was really, really critical about it, even though I get messages from so many people saying that it's really, really helpful. But, you know, I, I really want to make better YouTube content that I had in my head. I want to make videos again and um, not just time lapses. Like, I, I would like to do stuff that I think would be really fun with the editing. Um, I want to make them more useful. I want to make them have, like, actionable steps or, like, something that you can follow better. Or I would love to make, like, podcast study guides, you know, like little workbooks that I would you know, give out while with these, with each podcast and stuff like that. You know, like I have all these ideas and, but I knew, I just knew that if I tried to execute on them right now, it would be totally overwhelming. And I'm really, really practicing simple constrained focus. So on top of the shame from past in inconsistencies, I was also beating myself up for not having perfect content. So all of this came up to the surface during that week off last week. And so I'm very, very glad that I did take that week off. Not because I needed the rest, although I'm sure I did, but because I didn't realize how much I was operating from this place of stress and shame. Like, phew, like, oh my God, thank goodness I didn't work another week with that kind of energy. I really had to learn how to relax and how to properly rest and recover so that I could come back stronger and more efficient and with more, with more energy like I do now. I also had to seriously let go of the shame around inconsistency, which is helping a ton right now with my energy level. Holding on to shame about anything, really, it, it really is like holding on and dragging around a super, super heavy bag of emotional shit. And it really slows you down. I was totally believing that people aren't going to trust me, that I won't be successful, that I'm a fraud, that I don't know what I'm doing, that successful people don't do this, that it's me and, and I'm, not, I'm like not part of that group. And what I'm really understanding is that we can really use other people's teachings to hurt us when really it's meant to help us. Please don't use anything I say as a reason to think that you need to be perfect at it. And if you're not perfect at it, you're not worthy. You're, you're doing it wrong or that, you know, you're not, it means that you suck at this or it means that you're, you're not going to be, you know, you're never going to get it or you're not successful or whatever. Because I promise you, whatever book or podcast or anything that you're reading where a teacher sounds like they got it down perfectly, they're not. I promise you. Maybe some aspects, I don't know, for example, 
with Brooke Castillo, you know, the person I talk about in every single podcast, um, she talks about being pretty perfect with her schedule. And I do think she doesn't procrastinate it at all. However, we should keep in mind, though, that she's been doing mindset work since she was 16. Like she's been reading self-help books since she was 16. She's been a coach and, and doing coaching really seriously for 14 years. But yeah, she's been doing self-help work, right, since she was 16 and she's now 40-something. So let's just keep, you know, let's keep it real there. Let's like keep that in mind when we're kind of comparing ourselves because really there's no comparison. Anyway, she talks about only working three days a week and being really militant about it, right? That she never works on the weekend, she doesn't work on her days off, and she's very, very committed to self-care. And how she's also super efficient during the days that she does work, so she can take all of that time off. And then, I'm in her self-coaching scholars program. Um, it's this you know, membership site where every month we work on something different when it comes to our mind, when it comes to our self-coaching, it's amazing. And one of the months, she was teaching about how she plans one of her projects. And she was showing how she does her planning. And she ended up showing herself planning, working on days that she doesn't usually work. And she talked, she talked about how, like, you know, she doesn't usually work on these days. However, she really wants to get this done. She has a deadline just in order to fit some other things around. Like, she, she's going to work on a Saturday and a Sunday. So I think she generally does work only three days a week, like maybe 80% of the time. But it's not this rigid thing where if I end up working more or less or that I, you know, that I don't completely follow that schedule or that I mess up somehow, then that it means I'm fucked, that something's wrong with me, that I'm not, that there's something wrong with me, that I'm not perfect, that it's going to mean something about my future. And I don't know if other people really struggle with it. I think other people do. If I struggle with this, I know other people do. And I know my clients do. I don't know why (laughs) us teachers do that. Maybe it's ego. Maybe because like economy of word, like it's a lot quicker to say, you know, I never do something versus I do something most of the time, but sometimes I, you know, whatever, right? Maybe, maybe it's just like, oh, it's just easier to explain. Maybe it's something like, you know, do as I say, not as we do type of thing. But it's never a reason to not love yourself when you aren't perfect. When someone is in the habit of something, it means that they do it 80% of the time. And on the days that they don't, they're like, oh, that's weird. Huh, okay, I'll just pick it right back up tomorrow. So actually, I think that's why us teachers do that, really, is because we have, we have the belief and identity that we're somebody that does something every day, right? Or that we never do something. And so then that's how, that's our language. But it doesn't mean perfection, right? Anyway, so yeah, when we're in the habit of something, we're like, and when we don't do it, we're like, oh, that's weird. I'll just pick it right back up tomorrow. No big deal, right? Nothing to do. And that doesn't mean that we're not somebody that is consistent or whatever, But a lot of us, we do the opposite, where we miss a few days, we don't do something on some day, and then we beat ourselves up hard, which makes us avoid that thing even more. And then now we're carrying a heavy bag of shame around us at all times, slowing us down. Like this planning stuff is hard, you know, like being consistent can be hard. I'm slowly getting to the mindset that it's easy, especially now that I'm so much more kind to myself about not being perfect. But anyway, planning stuff can be hard. Being consistent can be hard. And I was telling one of my amazing clients about this this week, working on my schedule and like wrapping my head around this, this is so much harder than all of my dad's stuff. (laughs) Like I had a terrible relationship with with, with my dad. I hated him for years. And then I did some really tough mindset work that was so incredibly rewarding. And now I totally love him. And that is a cakewalk (laughs) in comparison to schedule related stuff. Like our brains just don't like naturally wanna do this, right? Our brains would rather seek pleasure and avoid pain in the moment. And it would rather not plan the future and all that kind of stuff. So if you're doing this work too, it's okay. 
Please don't use your schedule or not posting on Instagram every day or missing a deadline that you created for yourself as a reason to beat yourself up. Of course, yes, you want to work towards improving those things. Um, of course, you can't really expect to gain a ton of followers or audience or attention if you're posting once a year, right? Or once every six months. But truly, you cannot. Seriously, hear me on this. You cannot do it by hating yourself into it. This is exactly how I cured, quote unquote, my social anxiety. I was very scared of people and I would come home and beat myself up a ton after a social situation and I would analyze every word I said and I would, you know, and how I acted and what I was doing. I was angry at myself for being anxious and having low self-confidence. Like, God, the number of times I googled how to be confident <laughs> and reading blog posts about acting confident, like fake it till you make it kind of stuff, that just didn't work for me. And creating more evidence for myself that there was something wrong with me. Why didn't these blog post advices work for me? Which is why, like, applying knowledge, you know, like, like really understanding mindset work is what really works. I don't think that stuff works. Anyway, I was trying to beat myself up into being more confident, into being socially perfect. It doesn't work that way. I had to start by first being totally in love with myself, even though I felt conscious. I felt, sorry, I felt anxious. I had to first be totally in love with myself that I wasn't in love with myself. That that I struggled with these things and it meant that I had to be okay. I, I, I had to be okay with thinking with other people thinking I'm boring. I had to be okay. Like I was going to let myself be a mute if I wanted to in a social situation, which is funny because pressuring myself to not be boring was making me so scared to talk that I was a mute anyway. So allowing myself to be a mute, allowing myself to be boring was such a relief. It was actually like, like a cool, a cool like shower and a hot day. You know, it was such a relief. It was like, oh, thank God I can just do this. Like, whatever. You can think I'm boring. I'll be a mute, whatever. Today, people don't frighten me. <laughs> like, whatever. And it's because I firmly believe that, you know, and this was really huge for me, that I don't need anything from anybody. Like, truly, right? Whether someone likes me or dislikes me, it literally makes no difference in my life. And when I was trying to control other people's thoughts about me, right, I was trying to not be boring. My God, that was exhausting because it's literally impossible to control other people's thoughts about me, right? Like I, like a lot of us can barely control our own thoughts about ourselves, our own thoughts in general. And then we think we can control other people. So no wonder we're exhausted. No wonder we're anxious. Um, so yeah. And so when I like first had to allow my thoughts, allow other people's thoughts, it was just such a relief. But yeah, so that's where I am today. I feel totally like good, you know? And of course, sometimes I feel anxious in situations. Like again, not perfectionism. I feel anxious in situations, but there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't, I don't identify with being a socially anxious person. I'm just somebody that sometimes feels anxiety and that's normal. But I had to start at totally loving myself where I was at first. And then I was able to eventually let go of that story that I was socially anxious, which is a story, okay? If you're struggling with social anxiety, just know intellectually, like you're probably not going to immediately uh, believe this at your core, but you can know it intellectually that it is a story that you are telling yourself. You somehow at one point picked up the belief that you are socially anxious, that you struggle, well, you've always struggled with social anxiety. And it's a story that can definitely be changed. And you'll show up in the world totally differently when you let go of it. So, there is hope is what I'm saying, okay? Like for me, at one point, I thought it was impossible. I thought it was completely impossible. I thought this was something I'll always struggle with. Nope, it isn't. It just takes some work. 
So anyway, so I said that I help artists who struggle with procrastination, but one of my clients, we're actually doing so much work around social anxiety and it's been a lot of fun. I really love this work too, because the process is actually like literally the same. It all comes back to self-love. And I've talked about how I am a total self-love expert. It's just because of all the years that I've hated myself, right? Like I've hated myself for 26 years and now I like fucking got down and dirty to learn how to properly lo love myself. And I am, I am a proclaim, I self-proclaim it and I'm proud to say that I'm a self-love ex expert. And I know that sounds fucking cheesy, but it's the root of everything. Truly, it all comes back to this. When you love yourself, you enjoy spending time with your brain. And creating art requires a lot of alone time. And if we can't even handle being alone with our own thoughts, if we constantly need distractions with Instagram, with YouTube, with with books, right? Self-help books, right? With anything, with any with people, we can totally distract ourselves with people. If we cannot be alone with our own brains because we hate ourselves, it's going to be really hard to do art, right? It's going to be really hard not to procrastinate. But when you love yourself, you're going to enjoy being alone to do to create those things, right? When you love yourself, you realize you don't need anything from anyone. Like anything you're doing or anything you're looking for outside of yourself, right? You're like when we're socially anxious, a lot of it has to do with us wanting somebody's opinion about us, right? We want them to like us. We want them to give something to us. But when we love ourselves, we realize that everything that we need is within us. Everything that we need is totally like like something that we can give ourselves. And it, and it, and in that is how we really get that calm confidence. It's not arrogance, right? Arrogance is when we need somebody else to be lower than us. We need somebody else to be at a worse position for us to feel good. When you love yourself, then you like have that calm confidence of like, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I got what I need, <laughs> you know? Like I don't need anything outside of me. Um, and so then there's no anxiety going on with people. When you love yourself, you realize that sometimes you're not perfect. You realize that sometimes you don't love yourself. You don't like yourself that much. And that's totally okay. It doesn't mean anything. All it means is that you're human. And so then you can really let go of that perfectionism. It's crazy, beautiful, amazing stuff that I'm just so grateful to have learned and applied to my life. And it is my greatest honor and passion to help other people with the same thing. And it's so much fun to see people like, like, I, you know, the mindset shifts and like people being like, whoa. I never thought I could do, like, I could never thought that that's really possible. Oh, it's just, it's good stuff. Anyway, so I've let go of that shame, of that perfectionism around consistency and stuff. And it's funny that when you change your mindset about something, it's so weird to look back and think like, wow, why was I so ashamed of that? Like how unuseful was that? It just makes no difference, you know? And I learned all of this, not because I took the week off, it's because I put myself in a stressful situation in my eyes where I wasn't being productive, where I decided not to post something. So the ugly heads of these insecurities of mine about having to be productive all the time or a lot of the time and being inconsistent, right, or being consistent, whatever, reared their heads. And so I had to do some major work done on those and so I had to really flex, right? Those, those self-love muscles, muscles that I talk about in the last episode. That experience has been actually very consistent for me where it's always the hard times that I learn the most and grow the most. And when I knew, when I knew how to learn from it though, that's the biggest difference. That's the biggest thing that's been different for me this year or this last like a year and a half since I started coaching. Um, it's learning, it's knowing how to learn from the hard times. Like before coaching, before thought work, I had no idea how to grow from it. I just thought that all of these things were happening to me. I just thought that it was like fact that I'm, that something's wrong with me. I had no idea how to take pain 
and turn it into power. And now I'm just as excited for my clients, for my friends, for everyone when something quote unquote bad happens. I'm not like, yay, your loved ones died, but you know what I mean? I'm extremely empathetic. I get the pain, I understand it, but I also hold space and belief for people that they are powerful, that you are a powerful, creative, beautiful human being that is gonna rise stronger and and this belief with myself, like no, like believing this about myself too, has given me a really sharp edge in my life and in my mind. The other thing that I did recently, and this is totally a symptom of letting go of the shame, is that I started watching Bailey J's videos again. If you don't know who she is, she is like uh, an art youtuber she does daily vlog she has a daily vlog channel and an art youtube and she's the one that inspired me to get onto youtube i randomly found her her live stream like years ago three three four years ago and she yes she inspired me to go on youtube and before i couldn't watch like recently i couldn't watch her videos like when i quit youtube i had to stop watching her videos because it was just really painful I had put her on this pedestal of like the perfect YouTuber who's super consistent and like, you know, all that stuff. And so her channel just reminded me so much of the many times that I quit YouTube. Um, and so, yeah, it was just too painful to watch. But I started watching it again this week and oh my God, it's so awesome. Like I said, she was the one that inspired me to get on YouTube. And so, you know, like... All the times that I stopped YouTube, that I quit, all that stuff, right? Like, that those aren't bad things. Like, I look back on that now and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad that I did that. I'm so glad that I got on the stage and failed. And it's because of a lot of that that I then learned so much of this right now. And so, wow, I just have, I have her to thank for a lot of things. Just, you know, just like... All this mind, all this, all, just any, all, I'm just grateful for everything in my life. And so, yeah, it's just like, I think, you know, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have gone down this path as well. So thank you, Bailey. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Anyway, so I'm watching her vlogs and I'm studying her and I'm really studying, you know, I'm, I'm coming back to it with a totally different fresh mindset, right? I'm not coming to it with all this shame and like perfectionism feeling. I'm like looking at it and just seeing her as a teacher kind of like I'm really finding out what her thinking is and I want to adopt in myself. I really love the way she thinks about her videos and her art and her vlogs. Like she just has like a really positive mindset. I think she really does have that imperfection mindset of like, like she's just having fun and she's not about perfectionism. And I think like, I really wanna adopt that myself. So with perfectionism and being consistent, the thing that I'm really implementing that you can too is just, did I show up? It's not, did I show up perfectly? Did I show up in an entertaining way? Did I show up well? Was I helpful? Nope, none of that. Did I show up? I was being a perfectionist around like Instagram stories too and that caused me that yo-yo of like one week being really active and then the next week nothing. I'll get there, I know I will, but for now, did I show up to make a video podcast? Yes, yes I did. <laughs> So if you would like some personalized help with it, like if you've been listening and trying to do it but feel like you're not making that much progress or it's not sticking, you can book a consult call to see how I can help you massively transform your mindset um, with this process that I've really like perfected almost <laughs> so that you can transform your life as well. All right. Thanks for listening or, and watching and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.